Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of MedHead. Today we're going to be going over how to study to get A's in your pre-med courses, specifically content-driven courses. These are the study techniques that got me A's when I was pre-med at Baylor and uh, got me that high GPA to get into medical school. You cannot study for every pre-med course the exact same despite what other YouTube videos out there tell you. So today's tips are going to be based off of specifically content-driven courses and the other video is going to be based off of problem-solving based courses. Content-driven courses are courses that are usually high in material, lots of uh, definitions and details and things that usually require heavy memorization and understanding of scientific concepts. These kind of courses usually range from things like biology, anatomy, um, you have biochemistry which is kind of a mix between content and problem driven course, microbiology, psychology, sociology, and genetics which is also a mix. These steps are going to be divided into three different phases. First, you have your preview phase, then you have your learning phase, and then you have your maintenance phase. The five steps we discuss in this video will get you through these three phases. All right, so the first step is the night before, and that is in your preview phase. As hinted by the name, the night before should be dedicated to preview of the material, and this can look different for many different people, also depending on many different courses. During the preview period, you can find yourself either taking extensive notes or taking scarce notes. Um, just jotting things down that stuck out to you. Like I said, this is highly dependent on who you are as a person. So for me, it would depend on the course. And if it was a course that I found that was difficult to understand while in lecture, I would take more extensive notes, make sure that I had more of the ideas and the concepts down so that later, during lecture, I didn't have to worry about taking too many notes. If the class I felt like was slower paced and did not require too much of complex thought processes, then it would be okay for me to take more notes during class. So during the night before, what I would do is just jot on the slides provided by the professor. If slides were not provided, I would basically create notes with summaries and space in between to add to it of overall concepts. I would not write extensively, but if the class was something complex, like biochem, I would. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like for me. So here are what my notes look like for biochem. Anything that is in red was kind of added during class or uh, anything that's highlighted was added during class, but all that black is, that's preview work, that's uh, night before work. Um, similarly with, so let's look at another chapter. So anything that's in black um, was the night before. Anything that's colored was in class, same with the highlighting. So another tip I would like to promote is I took notes only the night before on this these pages, uh, on the front page. I left the back page blank um, just because if there was things that I wanted to add during class that you talked about, I added to this page right here. So this page will pertain to that. This page will be associated with that. So I always ended up having to draw something during class here, but this was during class and this was before. All right, so now we're in step two, learning phase. Um, so this is the day of lecture and you're there and you have either your extensive notes or your sparse summary notes and you're ready to jot down more. I would say with the extensive notes, you don't have to leave as much space. But like I said, with the biochem notes, I did only use the first page, so I had the back for extra notes. During this learning phase, make sure you're paying attention and seeing if the concepts you studied the night before, you understood them correctly, and if not, make sure you go after your professor or to your and ask them to further explain because there's nothing worse than teaching yourself wrong and having to unlearn it. That's all the learning phase is about. It's not really about having anything memorized or being able to know every single little thing about a concept. It's just about making sure you understand the concept and you understand the moving parts. This is not a time where you have to be able to regurgitate everything or teach somebody the concept. That will come later, but right now it's just about learning. Step three is right after the lecture or the next day after the lecture, and this is still in your learning phase. This is your time to really set in your foundation. You don't really want to risk having a shaky one because by the time you get to the maintenance phase, you're trying to memorize and get quicker with things for the test. If your foundation is shaky and you're memorizing incorrect things, you don't understand what you're memorizing, it's not gonna be fun. Me personally, I went over my notes the day of the lecture to make sure everything was understood properly. I would take aside some time, maybe around 6 p.m., seven depending on the schedule and make sure a few hours were in between I go over it again and see if everything is making sense just in a different setting 
If I didn't have the time to do it the day of lecture, I would do it the morning after that lecture or the day after that lecture around then, just to make sure that everything was on schedule and I wasn't falling behind. This is the last step of the learning phase. Now we're in phase three, our maintenance phase. So this is the part that is the hardest for a lot of people because you're going over material that you've seen and you understand and your mind can play games and play tricks on you and it might lie to you and tell you that you understand this material, therefore you are good to go. But understanding the material is for the learning phase. Now it's time to have it memorized and be able to regurgitate it quickly. I mean, your test is only gonna be an hour or so and your professor is not gonna let you, you know, take as long as you want. Now it's time to hammer those concepts into your brain, have them memorized and if things kind of slip through the cracks in the learning phase and things are hard to understand, this is also the time to kind of make sure that foundation is being set further because it's okay during the maintenance phase not have everything understood. You may have thought that you had everything understood, but if you need to make those tweaks, it's completely okay to do that. I did that with almost every single test, almost every single class I took. I thought I had everything understood, you know, about a week and a half before the test, a week before the test, and I didn't. And also lots of professors will teach new material all the way leading up to a day before or two days before the test. So it's important that you're still doing learning phase things and understanding phase things in the maintenance phase. Um, just maybe at a faster pace or speed depending on how close you are to the test. But it's okay to extend that learning and understanding phase all the way into the maintenance part. For step four, I would suggest using Anki or Quizlet. Now, this is the first step of the maintenance phase. So you're kind of working with things you kind of understood, but you have to memorize it like I said. And Anki is a great resource for space repetition. It's something that you have to keep up with and you have to make sure you trust the algorithm. And if you don't know what Anki is, I'll be leaving a video from it, the Anki, which is a guy who does a great job at explaining Anki and all the add-ons and things like that. It's basically a Quizlet with lots of specialized gadgets to make your memorization and learning period just for you and personalized for you. Um, Quizlet's also great. The thing I would say between Anki and Quizlet is that Anki is more personalized, but it's a learning curve and you have to learn how to use it. Like I said, I'll be putting a link down below by the Anki who will help you do that. Quizlet is less personalized, but it's easier to use, more user friendly. Make sure you just understand that both Quizlet and Anki are for material that you already understood and learned. These are things that you are just trying to memorize and hammer into your head. Do not use Anki or Quizlet for learning um, because that can turn into a disaster. Now you can use Quizlet or Anki uh, for only things that you have a tough time memorizing or you can use it for everything. I personally, for harder classes, use it for everything. In easier classes, I use it for only things that were hard to understand. Similarly, for classes that have really heavy load and lots of stuff, I didn't have time to make cards for everything. Um, so I would only do flashcards for things that I had a hard time understanding. And if it was a class with not a big load, then I would have time to make cards for everything. So I just, why not? All right, so now we're in the fifth step. This is the last step before your test, last step of the maintenance phase, and we are freaking out. No, I'm just kidding, we're not freaking out. I hope you're not freaking out. If you follow the last four steps, you shouldn't be freaking out. If you didn't, who am I kidding? You all follow the last four steps, you're fine. We're fine, it's okay. Last week before the test, last two weeks, one and a half weeks, however long you need for that class before the test. It is time to start consolidating things. This is the last step of the maintenance phase, and we want to start consolidating and making connections between concepts. For the test, especially for concept classes, I love making quick sheets and summarization sheets. 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 Sheet is a hard word to say. Cheat. Um, <laughs> And all these sheets are going to be graphs and charts and pictures and diagrams of things that just help your brain kind of bring things together and picture it all together. Now I know you guys might be like, I don't want to just read that, write my notes. This is not rewriting your notes. If you're rewriting your notes, it's not a consolidation sheet. It's just your notes times two. Consolidating is taking these things and organizing in a way that is better for your brain to compartmentalize and see them. I love being able to take my chapter three notes, you know, and have them be 10 pages and literally consolidate them down to one or two pages. And it was easy for my brain to kind of process everything because I'd seen it so many times, so I didn't have to write down all the details, but to be able to have it on one page was really great for my um, understanding process 
as connecting all the materials and going into the test, it was something I was really grateful for. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like in my anatomy notes. So for anatomy, here is we have the digestive system. So usually for anatomy, I would uh, take notes on the slides provided and then make these notes either the day of or the day after. But these are the notes I made the day of or day after for digestive system. And so yes, you can see they're fairly long. I mean, there's a lot of things about arteries for the GI and stuff like that. And we're not even at the end of it. There's there's more, like it just keeps going. There's a lot of it. But all of GI was basically put into a condensed chart with arteries and veins and all that fun stuff for the GI and also made into a kind of chart to kind of graph out everything. So this is what I mean when I say condensing everything and putting it kind of in a uh, different perspective to basically make connections and see where things fit together. This is a form of active learning and so is Anki or Quizlet in step four. Steps one, two, and three might not be that active um, because you're just step one, writing notes from the slides. Step two, you're just kind of listening. And step three, you're just adding and understanding from other resources such as your teacher or other websites. But step three and four is really about being active in your process of learning and understanding and memorizing. Step four and five, AKA your maintenance period, is probably the hardest period, like I said. And it takes a lot of dedication and kind of focus. Focus. Focusing, yeah, it takes lots of focusing. And so the way I focused when I did the maintenance period, AKA Anki or Quizlet, including making the cards and reviewing the cards and the quick sheets, was Pomodoro. If you don't know what the Pomodoro timer is, what the Pomodoro technique is, it's basically a method where you study for 25 minutes, you take a break for five. Study for 25, take a break for five, and so on. Or if you're like me and you hate the 25 short periods, you study for 50 and take a 10 minute break, study for 50, then 10, and so on. And I think after about two hours of studying, you have to take a 30 minute break. And after four hours of studying, you have to take an hour break, and then you can go back to the cycle again. For homework in the maintenance period, that is also a great resource. So make sure you guys are also doing your homework. If your teacher doesn't provide homework, then your maintenance will be flashcards and keeping up with them and doing them every day. But if your teacher does provide homework, make sure you're doing them along with everything, because obviously it's a grade. And make sure you take it seriously, because most likely your teacher is assigning that homework for a reason. If there's no reason, that's beef to handle with your teacher. <laughs> and last but not least, for the maintenance period, make sure you're cognizant about if you're studying by yourself or with the group. For step four, when you're making those flashcards and doing Quizlet or Anki, I would say start solo and then do a group. Step five, same thing, start solo, then do a group. For step four, if you start solo, you can have that time to make your cards and then when you start studying with the group, you already have those cards made, so you don't have to split your attention between studying with the group and the cards at the same time. Um, if you choose to study with the group, I would just make sure that you have those cards done. For step five, when you're about you know two weeks, one and a half weeks, a week away from that exam, you have to start studying by yourself again. This is only the beginning of step five and making sure you have those quick sheets down. But let's say it's about four, five, three, Two, one, how many days you ever need to make those quick sheets and to consolidate that information with graphs, charts, and whatnot. However long you need for that time, and then the time you have left, that's when you can start studying with the group because you need that time to consolidate those. Need some time to consolidate things yourself and not let your group kind of mess up your thinking process. Now, I'm not bagging on group studying. I loved group studying when I was in college, but that was whenever I had things set for myself and we were just hammering out those questions, quizzing each other, talking things out, teaching each other. That is a really great thing to do. Teaching is, you'll probably hear me say this on this channel a hundred times, teaching is probably the best way to consolidate, learn, memorize, understand things. But you can't teach unless you sat down by yourself first and learned it for yourself. Now there is a caveat there. When you're going through these steps, there is only about two steps that you won't revisit. So that's step one and that's step two. Step three, where you're revisiting your notes, that's gonna happen even in step five. You need to revisit your notes quite frequently, especially if you're unsure about something. Step four is gonna happen quite frequently. It should happen all the way up until the exam um, because you need to keep hammering 
those cards for Anki and Quizlet because you're, you're gonna lose that information if you're not constantly um, doing the cards. And those are really good for long-term memorization for when your final comes around and so that you don't have to sit there and do everything all over again. I mean, you, you will have to do everything again, but it will take less time. And step five, obviously, is the last step. So while you're doing step five, you will have to do some flashcards and some revisiting your notes. But by the time you're at step five, if you did everything correctly beforehand, like I mentioned, this is largely gonna be you just consolidating and not freaking out. That's the great thing about these steps. You probably won't freak out before your exam if you are doing these steps. You'll be confident and you'll be ready. If you do this and keep up with the material the right way, you are putting yourself in a great position for getting an A in that class. I use these techniques and got a high GPA and I do have a video disclosing my GPA to you guys, so I'll put it up here. But these techniques really did work for me and these are the steps I really did take myself. If you found value or quality in this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get notifications anytime I post a video. Let me know in the comment section below which of these tips you guys like the best and which ones you're gonna try out and hopefully it's all the steps so you guys can get that A. And if there's tips that I didn't mention, also let me know. I'll see you guys on the next Madhead.